floored, uh, presenting are Dave Eisenberg and Daniel Suo. We good? Hi everyone, my name is Dave Eisenberg. I am the co-founder and CEO of Floored. We're a New York City-based engineering company that's trying to radically improve the way that we communicate about real estate today. We're doing this with both a new hardware and a software solution, so let's dive in. We picked real estate as our first market because we were both frustrated and disappointed with the lack of transparency in this industry. This is one of the leading commercial real estate marketing services sites today. The information you're looking for is here. Of course, it doesn't tell you anything about what it would be like to actually lease that space. And this is true across the industry, from static floor plans to distorted photos to really boring videos. This industry has the terrible habit of giving you marketing content that what you see is not what you get. And so again, we've set out to fix that with a transformatively better visualization solution. Let's take a look. We use a new 3D camera that's produced by a company in Palo Alto called Matterport that gives us spatial data that allows us to show you spaces that look like this. This is a photorealistically rendered 3D model of a townhouse in Harlem that's undergoing a gut renovation. Notice how you can see things in 3D that you can't see in photography or video. We can look around at all of the different floors stacked on top of each other one at a time, like a nice real estate layer cake. And you can click in and walk in first person through the different floors. This is a super easy interface that's gonna transform how we visualize real estate. But perhaps even more important than seeing a space in its current condition is the ability to see a space in a different condition than how it exists today. This is really valuable for people like me who have a lot of difficulty visualizing what a space could look like. And so what we've done is this is really helpful for people who are also working in construction or trying to show a tenant what the space could look like. So last Friday morning, I took three of my more intrepid team members down to the new One World Trade Center building being constructed downtown. We went up to the very top floor, and what I'm about to show you is brand new. You're gonna see some of the absolute coolest views in all of Manhattan. This is gonna be the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere. We brought the camera in, and we scanned the floor to get all of the dimensions. And as we fly in, you're gonna see the difference between what it looks like to see the raw 3D data that comes off of the device, and how our software has extrapolated to the rest of the space. This is a clean walk through one of the top floors in the World Trade Center. As we walk over to the window line, you're gonna see some of the coolest views I've ever seen in my entire life. This is our image stitching software at work. You're gonna see panoramic 360 degree views of exactly what we saw when we were up there. We're trying to build the world's most transparent real estate visualization solution. But we also do things like helping you digita digitally design how this space could look like. So here you're gonna see a furniture that's been modeled inside of the space. Sorry, a little nod to AOL there. Um, we're really excited about doing this because this is, uh, again, this is like a, a practical application of virtual reality. Once I've seen these spaces in 3D, I don't know if I would ever wanna go back to a 2D floor plan. I won't do that as a rhetorical question. Um, so let's show you our process from end to end. What we do is we capture the data using the 3D camera. So it'll actually be available for public, for the public purchase later this year. We've modified the hardware so that we've got a digital SLR on top of the camera that gives us more control over the textures that are coming in. Our commercial customers then ask us to render the space in a bunch of different formats. We can show you the space as is, we can show you the space empty, or we can show you the space in a completely different condition than what you have today. No matter what we do, we show the space in a condition that allows you to explore it both streaming through the browser, but then also on the iPad. But today we're about to announce something totally new. No one's ever seen this before. This is the number one most requested feature set that our customers have asked us for. And it's the ability to edit data in the model directly, in the browser, and on any mobile device that serves up WebGL. Here you're gonna see the lighting conditions inside of the space actually changing because someone is dragging a slider behind the scenes to say this is what time of day it is. This is a really tough real-time lighting problem. But now that we've cracked it, it unlocks unbelievably new and greater features that, uh, that we're gonna give to our end users, such as the ability to add furniture to the space, highlight specific pieces of furniture, turn them around, swap out both colors and materials inside of the scene, group the furniture together, swap it out as a layout, and bring something new in. So here you can see that we've taken what was a cool technology game room and we've turned it into a really boring corporate boardroom with really nice furniture. We even added a small plant. 
So we're really excited about this business for about three different reasons, I have a zillion reasons, but three reasons that I'll call it today. The first is that this is a huge market. Commercial real estate marketing services alone is about $30 billion that's spent annually. And that goes to stuff like sending someone in to measure a floor plan by hand or printing out marketing collateral that no one wants to read and is bad for the environment. But even if it turns out that I'm really bad at selling to the commercial real estate industry, which is a distinct possibility, there are these other adjacent industries that are clamoring for software that doesn't exist, architecture, interior design, construction, and more. Um, what I'm really proud about, though, is that this is a very, very difficult set of engineering challenges. And we've built that team entirely in-house here in New York. We've had to build engineering competencies across hardware, photography, lighting, computer vision, computer graphics, and user interface and user experience design. It's a lot. This is our team. Everything we do, we think of in 3D. If you go to floor.com slash about, you'll be able to click on our faces and see us making funny faces. Behind the scenes, uh, in the technology ecosystem at large, there's a ton of awesome activity going on in the 3D field. We think that there's going to be a massive need in the future for a company that seeks to exist just to refine that data to make it usable for end users. That's us. We're floored, and we're changing the way that we communicate about real estate. Thank you. Very cool. Judges. This is so, really, really cool tech, man. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you. So it reminds me a lot of the first shooter games that I used to play when I was younger. Yeah. Uh, they make 3D models of space. Yeah. We do, too. So it feels the same. So why, why did you decide you know, to pick that vertical and not go for something more appropriate for the military? We have really uh, an open field here. There are very few companies that have ever existed to serve the commercial real estate industry. It's huge. Uh, this is probably the easiest thing that we could do. I, it, for me, it was, uh, it was an investigative process after we looked at residential real estate, which we know better. But um, this is where we've had more traction faster. So we're going after it. So I have a question about cost. I mean, you, you mentioned that you know, if, if someone's going to be marketing some commercial real estate, you know, usually what the, you know, the pr prospective lease person gets is a, you know, paper bound thing that's pretty crappy. Yeah. Um, so how, how long does it take for this to occur? How quickly, you know, I mean, how, how much is yeah. it cost? I'm just sort of curious if, is this like all commercial real estate eventually? This is, is all, only the super yeah, range? I mean, this is going to be disruptively low price. It is today. I mean, we, we sell this to active customers. The townhouse that you saw, that was completely generated automatically. So the, the total cost for us to deliver that was almost nil. Um, the, when we start to make modifications to the space, there is a human component. But again, we're working to take ourselves out of that equation entirely. Right now, we're a marketing services business. I would say that we deliver a better product faster and cheaper. But over time, this is just a software as service business that like, serves the industry. Some sense of how much it, I'm just curious how much it costs. Oh, like, yeah, sure. So uh, to scan, you've got between 10 and 25 cents a square foot. To clean out all of the information, you've got uh, between 25 and 50 cents a square foot. And then uh, if you want to start designing stuff that doesn't exist, we can go pretty high. But 50 cents to $2 a square foot. So for like a 18,000 square foot floor, what's it going to cost to have you produce something yeah, nice? Yeah, so we, we try and sell all three together. So you've got uh, our, our scan service, uh, the ability to clean it out and show it empty, and then design service. Roughly speaking, we get that to around a dollar a square foot, so about 18 grand. By the way, that replaces, you would have no idea how expensive these print materials are. And anytime you want to build a 3D rendering by hand, you know, they might pay five to $10,000 for one static shot. So in many cases, we don't get any eyebrows raised when we quote these prices. On the technology side, how much of it is just like built out versus what sort of challenges are you still working on? Uh, it's inc I mean, we face a ton of challenges every day. I'd say what you saw is our end product, and the way that we get there is not perfectly automated, but that's the goal for the company. I'd say every year we're going to automate huger, you know, bigger and bigger chunks of that process. But again, out of a team of 10, we have nine software engineers, and so it's a very technology-driven organization. Uh, to be more specific, on the R&D side, to automatically go from the raw 3D data to a perfectly uh, designed designed new space, uh, I'd say we've automated maybe a third or 40% or of that. So you make so, um, really, really ugly spaces look super fancy. Yeah. In the early you know, data that you have, is, is there any um, evidence that it helps a lot with conversion? I mean, the early data is that it helps massively with conversion. Again, the, the, the thing that we're replacing here is really crappy marketing materials. There's, like, there's nothing that these people are doing today. And so anything, I think, would be a major improvement. But particularly when you give the user control over that experience to walk around, it ends up being a transformative experience for them. 
the data set. Is that something that you guys can retain or, or does? Yeah, the, we've retained it to date in the same way that a photographer who goes into shoot shots would do that. Our customers have a, a license to use the data for their own purposes, but the core underlying data we actually use. Are you guys doing anything to create like a database of, of space as well? Yeah, I'd love to do that. I think it's gonna take us at least a few years to build up a large enough repository. The, the fascinating piece is gonna come as the hardware costs go down and down and ultimately 3D sensors are embedded in mobile devices, you're just gonna have a massive explosion of 3D data. And again, that's where we see some big opportunities in the long run. Has anybody decided to try to fully map one of their buildings or anything like that? I mean, yeah, a few of our early customers are talking about every time a lease opens up to scan each floor. So we just did one, There was a we had a small announcement about it this morning on 54th Street where all of their available leasings we took we and mapped into 3D. How do you get new data into the system of um, like decorations or types of furniture? A uh, mix of, we, every time we scan we get some rough 3D data of everything that we've seen and then we've also got folks who build 3D models pretty quickly. I see, so if I saw like some sort of TV on online listing, yeah. you can't import it? Uh, we'll get a rough version of that. It'll require us to clean it up. What's cool is that all of the furniture in the world at one point was in a CAD model in order to be constructed. So these 3D models of a lot of stuff in the world do exist. Do you have any data, data yet around sort of your price comparison compared to existing products in the market and then sell through when using your products as opposed to? Yeah, so we're a little early for like long term. Again, a typical lease takes 18 months to like get end to end, but uh, initial feedback suggests that you put more pizzazz into your marketing, you get more attention and then you get uh, deeper engagement. I think one of the things I like to think about from the transparency perspective is I hate the idea of showing up at a building and then within two minutes immediately knowing that it's the wrong space for me. This really eliminates that altogether. So in some sense, we're cutting out a bunch of the noise in the industry. How do you launch in a new market? We haven't yet, um, but I anticipate putting physical uh, cameras in each geographic location as well as, it's relatively easy to train someone how to use the data, so, or how to use the camera. So uh, we'll be, we've done, that's not true. We've done some projects in DC and Boston, but I think a broader geographic rollout will be later this year. How much is the camera? Uh, we don't sell the camera, it's sold by the Palo Alto based company. Right, no, I was just kind of curious, I mean. I, I think later this year they'll sell it for like a nice SLR. Okay. Do you imagine being able to do similar stuff even with like hand, like an iPhone or whatever, or is it highly specialized I think specialized it's gonna take to like an entire iteration of new hardware development, but I'm positive we're gonna get there. A lot of the buzz at CES this year was around 3D sensing and mobile devices. Great, that was floored. Thank you guys very Thank much. You.